What's up everyone? My name is John, you're watching ARTV, and it's time for a review of the third studio album by Tame Impala. It's called Current. Tame Impala are a psychedelic band from Australia who have managed to find success not only in their home country, but really all over the world, especially after the release of their last album in 2012, Lonerism. Deservedly so, that was a fantastic album. Psych pop leaning jams all over this thing. Numerous influences, though. I wouldn't just label them as a psychedelic band because they take elements of synth pop, pop, rock, garage rock, really everything, and manage to combine it into each of their albums. Now, I will say that each album that they've released so far focuses on different things, and here on Currents, I feel like it's more about the lyrics and the potency that those carry with them, if you will, uh, whereas the last album was maybe more so not, not about the lyrics, but at the same time, I found myself falling into the grooves of the music more. But I think they struck a nice balance here, and I want to go ahead and break this down kind of track by track, just because because this is, in my mind at least, sort of a concept album, at least loosely, whether Kevin Parker, the main lyricist and the singer of this band, was intending it that way or not. Three years later, Kevin Parker and the rest of the crew are back with a smooth record full of fantastic jams. Currents doesn't necessarily stray all that far from their sounds in the past, but I do see them leaning more on this synth-driven sound that they had kind of laid the building blocks for on some of their past albums. If you don't like synthesizers, then this record probably probably is not for you. I admit that I could see some of these songs as being a little bit difficult for one to click with or start getting into if you're just looking at it at surface level. Whenever placed under a microscope though, I think that's whenever we really see what Currents has to offer. Parker's vocals are often low-key and subdued, but definitely not emotionless. The lyrics seem to follow kind of a similar story throughout like I was hinting at, dealing with relationships and lovers and struggles, friends, life in general. It's not necessarily what he has to say that's interesting in and of itself, it's how he says it, how it's packaged so neatly and handed off to the listener. Let's go ahead and discuss the opening track, Let It Happen. There's a deep bass groove that this song just kind of falls into with the soothing vocals, the layered electronics, and not to mention a subtle guitar line that really doesn't start to break through, at least not big time until around the six minute mark, but whenever it does, it's one of my favorite moments on the album musically. As soon as that guitar works its way in big time, it's just so phenomenal. Phenomenal. Unlike that Eminem song of the same name. Sorry, i had been meaning to do a track review and I had to slide it in there somewhere. This song might be seven minutes long, but it's a nice trip down psychedelia lane. Just take life as it comes, let it come at you, don't try to stop nature from running its course, and of course, just let it happen. There's a couple of great interludes on this record in the form of nangs and gossip, opting for more of a focus on the vibrant and cutting instrumentals rather than the lyrical or even vocal depth. I see nangs in particular as being one of the brightest spots on this record, really just providing a relaxing vibe that's really just easy to lose yourself inside of. The Moment is one of those tracks that's just an absolute jam. It highlights this groovy bass line and a spry keyboard pattern that transitions into some outstanding synth and snap combos. And then of course Parker's repetition of the phrase, it's getting closer, just the way that that's manipulated and said over and over again. It's just really earwormy. One of the album's defining moments comes in the wave of Yes, I'm Changing, which is quite possibly my favorite track on Currents at this point. As Parker sings, I felt the strongest emotion, and it wasn't hate. For once, I feel the change that he's going through. He's seeing things from a different point of view, and while still sounding somewhat bitter here on this track, it seems like he's ready to reveal this new position, this new point of view that he is seeing life through, this new lens or filter, if you will. The instrumental isn't necessarily the most ear-grabbing thing in their catalog, nor does it need to be. I think for this song's sake, it works because it highlights the vocals over everything else. It lets me focus on the lyrical content. But that's not to say that there's nothing to this instrumental whatsoever. There's still a bit of magic about this tune, especially in the keys, the bass work, especially near the end of this track, and I don't want you to think for a minute that I'm knocking the instrumental here, I just think it's a little bit more subdued because it needs to be. Eventually, Soars High is one of the most alluring tracks in terms of its musicianship. The guitar line is fuzzy and inviting, doing an excellent job of blending in with the 70s-esque vocal approach that Parker took on this one, and some hopeful-sounding synth and bass work. It features an upbeat sound, but really contrasts that with dark 
darker words that are most likely referring to a crumbling relationship. According to the singer, this is the emotional core of the record, and while I don't see that being personally true for me in terms of listening to this song just because there are others that grip me and hit me a little bit harder, I could see that being the case for him. There's a lot of moments on this record that I find probably a little bit more engaging than maybe some others would just because of how appealing and relatable I find the lyrical content to be. Hurting others, leaving things in the past, finding a way to still move on and carry on with day-to-day -day life and be okay with everything. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to find all over Currents, and the songs that this band has created fit quite nicely with Parker's style the majority of the time. I will say that it gets hard to distinguish some of these songs from their peers as the record goes on, and the record really doesn't stray all that far from its original synth-driven atmosphere. Pushing that aside, we find another memorable performance in The Less I Know, The Better. There's some nifty guitar riffs here that remind me of something vintage, and then Parker's vocals often drift into this high octave that I would normally find probably a little bit more off-putting, but they work here and really well. Then we get to the track Past Life and we see a man kind of retreating back to his old ways, his old self and kind of recalling these memories and how he dealt with things and looking at them as if they happened in another life. The pitch down vocals sound pretty awful here if I'm being honest and I think I get what they were going for, but at the same time, it's just not a pleasant song to listen to, as much as I do love the lyrical content. The short track Disciples provides a sunny dissonance that the record really needed to fuel itself at this point, and then moves nicely into the lead single, Cause I'm a Man. Ooh, I've been vibing on this one for a few months now, and it still sounds as great as I did the first time I heard it. This track really just sees Parker using this as a crutch. Cause I'm a man, I didn't think it through, but I think he also realizes how prideful he's coming off and the song rides off of those vibes. It's easily the catchiest song on Currents with its chorus dripping with these fuzzy guitars and keys that are as infectious as I've ever seen them with Tame and Paula. Things steadily move along as reality and motion starts to play and my first few listens through this album, I think this is around the spot where I kind of started losing a little bit of interest just because things were getting cluttered in my head. I wasn't able to sort things out and distinguish which song was which. Whenever I started reading along with the lyrics though, that's when things started changing for me, especially with this track. Now I really do like what this song has to say, but I'm not necessarily connecting with it in a way that I am with a lot of these other songs. I think the instrumental doesn't feel as creative and fresh and new, I guess, I suppose as some of the other stuff on this record does, it feels like something they might have done for a B-side, and I kind of hate that. We see a heated recollection of an argument and past incidents on the track Love slash Paranoia. I hate to keep bringing up the fact that a lot of these songs hit me hard lyrically just because I find a lot of them to be relatable, but dear lord, is this one just pretty much on point with some shit that I've been through recently. I love it whenever music does that, and this song resonates with me for a reason. It also does a great job of setting up the final track on the album, New Person, same old mistakes. It's another great song that I'm finding hard to describe for whatever reason, but wherever my words fail me, Parker comes through big time and speaks loudly as we hear the struggle of someone just fucking up owning up to it, feeling a bit sorry for themselves, and casting blame on others and other life happenings. How about this? New sounds, same great band. Currents by Tame Impala definitely deserves to be heard, and then studied, I would say, and should at least be admired for its lyrical potency and the work that went into crafting it. I'll admit that it's not always captivating, and the replay factor might not necessarily be there for myself or for everyone that listens to it, but it doesn't mean that it's worth skipping over and not hearing. Currents by Tame Impala gets a four. And guess you forgot to shoot the outro for the video, and I realized it whenever I was sitting here editing. Anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of the album in the comments section down below. Did you love what they had to say on this new Tame Impala record, or was the new sound just not really doing it for you? If there's other albums you want to see me tackle, let me about, know about those in the comments as well. And, of course, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, maybe, because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. And, other than that, I will see you very soon, right here on ARTV.